Hi everyone, let's go over my low time frame and micro bullish and bearish Elliott wave scenarios on Bitcoin. Starting with the low time frame bullish scenario where we're looking for a double one two for then continuation to the upside in a bigger way three. In this scenario, the blue count over here is a lower degree count compared to the green count. So in green, we have a one, two, three, four, five. And then inside the green three, we have the blue count, which then again is a five wave structure. Now, what you like to see in a double one, two is that the lower degree wave one is shorter in time and price compared to the first wave one. But as you can see, this second wave one over here is longer in time as well as larger in price compared to the first wave one, which is not really something that you like like to see and also if we look at currently this wave two over here the blue wave two and we compare it to the first wave two that we have then you will see that also this second wave two is longer in time as this is the one-to-one -one, compared to the green wave two which is not really something you like to see and lowers the probabilities of a double one two scenario for then a bigger three to the upside in this bullish scenario if we then zoom in to this potential wave two at least in this bullish scenario then we've been looking for a WXY with a zigzag in W then an X and we were looking for a new low to be made for price to at least wick this low for then a wave Y where the most common target area for a Y is between the 0 0.618 and the 1.236 now clearly these over here the 1 to 1 and the 1.236 are very very low and the 0 0.618 is a good target as well also close to my support area that I had over here around 29k as you can see over here on the right side now in this scenario could the low then be in well by all means the low can be in or wicking the double bottom that price made doesn't really matter for this scenario what matters is that you want to see an impulse to the upside you want to see five wave structures volume increasing because this is then the beginning of a bigger wave three if we zoom out and look at the low time frame scenario this is the bearish scenario we're first looking for a move to the upside and then a continuation to the downside in this scenario, this first wave one over here is a leading diagonal where all of the waves were zigzag structures for then now a wave two to the upside also looking for a three wave structure. Now you could have potentially wave two ending over here but time wise that is a lower probability high over here for a wave two because usually corrective structures are finishing after the 0 0.382 fib time and this high over here is incredibly short compared to a long wave one and also close or ended before far before the 0 0.382 so that is the reason why we're mainly looking for another push to the upside preferably in this wave two where the double top over here is interesting at 29.7k and in general the 29.7k area is interesting as we have some more resistance around this area for the potentially a three wave structure over here and then continuation to the downside where you want to see a wave three the opposite side to the downside towards 27.26k now if we look at this wave 2 and we zoom in a little bit then we had a nice ABC structure in a wave A that is also a very common corrective pattern for a potential wave 2 but again this high over here compared to the length of wave 1 in time this is a very short structure so looking at this currently to be then a wave A for looking for this, this B over here and then a wave C now for an expanding flat you expect price to go a little bit lower but for a regular flat the 1 to the 105 Fibonacci taken from the low to the high of A is the most common target area for a wave B in a regular flat where then you want to see an impulsive structure to the upside in a wave C where the target area for C is between the 1 and the 1 1.236 which is between 29.6k and 29.8k which includes this very nice resistance area so that is quite interesting again price did make a double bottom over here so could wig the lows also we have a untapped daily just below price uh, over here at 29.040 which is just below the low over here it did touch the daily naked point of control that we had so the low over here wicked inside the naked point of control for then a little bit of a move towards the upside however it could be nice to maybe hit the daily naked point of control or the daily as well wick the double bottom for liquidity and then a move to the upside but that's something we have to wait and see the resistance above price at the moment is over here between 29.3k and 29.4k which includes a daily naked point of control the range point of control as well as a daily level at the high of this resistance area over here 
Now, if we then look at the CVD divergences, then currently what we see on the lower time frames is a little bit mixed in some way because yes, we have the bearish CVD divergences still active over here, as you can see where the target is then taking this low, but also we have a bullish CVD divergences, which are made then with this low over here. And then the target of the bullish CVD divergences is this high, but price over here came down on high volume and then the bullish CVD divergences therefore can be trusted less like the probabilities go down for it to play out of course it can play out but it's a probabilities game so that's just something good to know if we then look at these divergences over here then you can see lower high on price but initially a higher high on the yellow cvd with this area of course once price started ranging the yellow line moved to the downside and then started to create those bullish cvd divergences higher low on price lower low on yellow as well as on blue but I don't know if like, you know, if these are leading or not just because of the high volume of this candle. And as mentioned, the high volume over here in this candle, in this low, um, makes the bullish CVD divergences have a lower probability of playing out. But, you know, we have to wait and see how that works. If we then look at the least to the more local move to the upside over here, we can see price moving to the upside. And what I thought is interesting to at least share, as you don't see it too often, is that some of these green candles had CVD moving down on the yellow line. So here you can see a green candle, but CVD moving down, which is like an in-candle in CVD divergence, where there's more sellers than buyers in this one candle, but it's still closed green for then, you know, it's a bullish sign for a little bit of continuation over here. If we then uh, look at the news today, 8 p.m. Central East European time, there's news, so make sure you trade safe around these hours. And then finally, if we look at the probabilities of the different scenarios, then on the medium time frame currently, the higher probability is for price to move to the downside. On the low time frame, currently this scenario looks like a higher probability scenario and then a wave one two continuation to the downside in a bigger wave three now in both of these scenarios as you notice we're looking for upside in the bullish scenario we're looking for up as well as for this wave two if price is going to test or retest this support area on high volume and you know a very much impulsivity then yes the high of two could be in but from a probability standpoint elliott wave standpoint it would be nicer to have another high over here for a, a wave two and then on the micro i'm actually quite neutral it's quite difficult to read the micro at the moment with this move that we have to the downside and is price going to make another low is it going to tag the double bottom here or is it instantly going to move towards the upside right now where it is it's difficult to say it's not easy to count this structure it doesn't really look great as a like a double one two or a triple one two because it's an expanding structure it like is difficult to count which then immediately leads to like is it then more corrective because corrections are more difficult to count than impulses so it's a little bit of a weird structure is this an abc well then in wave c we have a three wave structure over here another nice five wave move or are we going to get something like an expanding structure again it's a bit weird and a bit odd to count this price action to the downside and that is the main reason why i said well i'm neutral currently on the micro but overall low time frame looking for more upside now i hope this video was helpful or valuable to you please check out the most recent educational video i've made about the best trading indicator you can use in my opinion which is the cvd and for now thanks for watching and subscribing and i'd like to see you at the next one bye bye